connected cable where, where I grew up. And so we just had the broadcast networks and I watched Dan Rather. And I loved Dan Rather. I would give him a kiss every night. I'd go over and give him a peck on the lips on the TV, which somehow I made the huge mistake of telling somebody at school because I remember the moment. I still remember it when we were sitting on the risers and she said, I know that Aaron Burnett thinks she's gonna marry Dan Rather. My first big break came when I wrote a letter to Willow Bay, who was an anchor right here actually at CNN. And I was a junior analyst at Goldman Sachs. I remember coming home one night and it was three or four in the morning and my sister and brother-in-law called me that morning and said, you've got to get the New York Times. And at that point in my life, consuming massive amounts of media was basically the last thing on my mind. It was, you know, grabbing sleep whenever you can. I was right out of college. And I said, all right, fine. So I went and bought the New York Times and there on the front page of the business section, was a profile of Willow Bay and the show Moneyline that she was hosting on CNN. And I had known who Willow Bay was since I was a little girl because actually in the New York Times, they always had a fold out section at the beginning of the magazine that was for Estee Lauder. And at the time, Willow was the face of Estee Lauder and they had these beautiful color coordinated ad campaigns and I had saved them. So I was essentially a Willow Bay stalker. So here I am in my 20s, a couple years out of college and I write her this letter and it turns out that her assistant got the letter and Willow was actually looking to replace her because her assistant wanted to go actually work on Broadway. Total aside, the assistant ended up being incredibly successful on Broadway. When Willow moved to Los Angeles, I became a writer on Moneyline and, and I, I love TV a lot, but I wasn't sure that I really wanted to do it forever. And I had a friend who said, you've got to come start this new online business. It's, it's kind of an amazing combination of, of coming up with the editorial and the media side of things and running a business that's going to be online video. By the way, this was before anyone had heard of video online. <laughs> so um, I went and did that and during that time I realized that I loved the editorial and preparing for the interviews and doing the interviews. I got to do so many interviews that no one ever watched, which is a really, really wonderful gift because I was able to improve <laughs> without the whole world having to watch. I decided I really loved doing that part, the research, the actual television part of it. So I wrote a letter to Matt Winkler, who is the editor-in-chief of Bloomberg, and Matt Winkler brought me over to Bloomberg, and that's how I got into television on the on-camera side of things. So I had two very lucky and wonderful experiences that came together, but I didn't know when I was a kid what I wanted to do. Some people knew all the way along, and. I think from some of the things I've said, it's clear I didn't totally know what I wanted to be, quote unquote, when I grew up. I didn't think I had any interest in broadcast journalism except for two really interesting things, one of which I had totally forgotten. My mother found an essay that I wrote in sixth or seventh grade about you had to pick a career, and I picked broadcast journalism, and I'd done all this research on it, you know, mentioned all these people. There was one other reason that I knew I had an interest in broadcast journalism, I guess, in retrospect. Whenever I went to the dentist, they had these little cards that you could fill out, you know, if you were getting married, and I would always pick one up and fill it out because I was going to get married to Dan Rather. And there's a, a really neat ending to that story that when I got the show here on CNN, which was a real dream come true for me, Dan Rather came on the show and we talked about that moment. And I, there I was sitting, sitting across from Dan Rather and I just had this, this amazing feeling of awe that this had happened in my life. It is such an honor for me. Well, I'm sorry we didn't have field television at that time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're one of those people who's lucky enough to know at a very young age, I want to be a doctor. I want to be an anchor on CNN. I, you know, whatever it is, you, you just may, you may know. I was someone who, when I put together the things I knew in the past, it makes complete sense where I am right now. I mean, I wanted to be an archaeologist and a CIA agent. I kind of think at CNN, you actually are a little bit of both in a weird way. For me, when I left college, and I took a, a job in, in banking, I was learning. It was take a job and learn as much as you can and then and be open to that and, and, and really soak it in like a sponge. But then when you realize it isn't right for you, don't be afraid to jump. But you have to balance that with jumping for the right reasons and you have to be willing to do whatever it takes, all kinds of grunt work. There's no job that's beneath anybody. That, that's what it takes and that's what I would say anybody should do that wants to be successful in this business or any other business and that all those of us in the business need to always remember and keep doing.